Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. This video lecture explains what are margins and what is their role in futures contracts. Simply speaking, margins are a kind of safety deposits which are demanded by brokers from the investors while buying or selling futures contracts and are mostly in the form of cash. There are three types of margins, initial margin, maintenance margin and variation margin. Initial margin, also known as the investor's equity, is charged at the start of the contract. This is usually set in advance either as a percentage of the total value of the contract or a fixed amount per contract. Maintenance margin is a limit set by the broker below which the investor's account must not fall. And if it does, the investor is asked to refill the amount and bring it back to the initial margin. This refilled amount is known as the variation margin. Let me explain all these margins with the help of a simple example and related calculations. Suppose there is an investor who enters into a five-day futures contract to buy an asset XYZ. Let's assume that the broker has set an initial margin requirement of 10 rupees per contract. and the maintenance margin requirement is 5 rupees. Now, since futures contracts trade on organized exchanges, therefore their prices will change on a daily basis just like stocks and bonds. So we'll have 5 daily prices because it's a 5 day futures contract. We can create a table to incorporate all the data. On the very left column, I can write daily prices. In the second column, I can write the price change. And in the third column, we can do adjustments in the margin account of the investor. Currently, the margin account is at 10 rupees because the initial margin requirement is 10 rupees. Now this amount must not fall below rupees 5 because that is the maintenance margin requirement. We'll come to this point in a while. Let's say the price of this contract today is rupees 15 and we denote this price by F0. Let's say on the very first day the price increases to rupees 17. Let's call this price F1. Now, based on mark to market principle, we can see that our buyer has gained a 2 rupees profit. This is because if he were to enter into the contract as of today, he would have purchased the contract at 17, which is 2 rupees higher than the previous day's price, which is rupees 15. So we'll write plus 2 as a price change in the second column, and our margin account will be credited by 2 rupees, thereby increasing it to 12. Now any amount which is above the initial margin can be withdrawn or left to earn some interest. However, this is not the point of concern for this lecture, so we leave the interest part. But I made this point so that you must know that this does happen in normal exchange operations. Let's say on day 2 the price fell to rupees 13. Let's call this price F2. Now, in comparison to day one, this is a decrease of four rupees. So we will write minus four in the price change column and we'll decrease our margin account by rupees four, bringing it to the level of eight. Since we are still above the maintenance margin requirement of rupees five, so we are good to go as we will not receive any margin call. Let's say on day three, the price further fell to rupees 10. Let's denote this price F3. This time we'll write minus 3 in our price change because it's a 3 rupees further decrease from day 2. And we'll decrease our margin account by further 3 rupees, bringing it to the level of 5. But we're still not below this level, so there won't be a margin call either. Let's move on. The price further fell to rupees 8 which is again a 2 rupees decrease 
from the previous day. So we'll write minus two in price change and our margin account will now come to rupees three, decreasing further by two rupees. Now you can see that our margin has fallen below the maintenance margin requirement, which is rupees five. And this is where we receive a margin call from the broker. At this point, we have to refill our margin account and bring it back to the initial margin, which is rupees 10. Remember that we don't have to refill it back to the maintenance margin, which is rupees five. Rather, we have to refill it back to the initial margin, which is rupees 10. This is the point where most of the students err uh, and do a mistake. So now in order to bring our account from three back to 10, we need additional seven rupees. This amount which need to be added to the margin is known as the variation margin. This variation margin is always a difference between the initial margin and the amount which has fallen below the maintenance margin, which is seven in this case. So now our account is back to rupees 10 because we added a variation margin of seven on day four. So now our margin account again stands at rupees 10. Now, if on the next day, F5, if the new price is 10, it's a two rupees increase from the previous day's price. So we'll write a plus two price change on day five and our margin account will now come to 12 because it was already set at 10 a day earlier. So plus two on the next day brings the account to rupees 12. So this is how daily adjustments are made in the account till the maturity of the futures contract. Now there's another method to do the same calculations where each price is compared with the initial price of the contract, which is 15 in this case, rather than compare it with the previous day's price. I'm doing these calculations on the left hand side. So let's see what happens to the price change and margin account with this method. So we'll set the margin account again at rupees 10. Now on day one, when the price increased to 17 from 15, so we can write plus two as a price change, just like we did earlier, and the account increased to rupees 12. So the first day's calculations are exactly the same, just like we did in the previous method. When F2 is 13, so instead of comparing this price now to 17, we will compare it with 15. So it's a two rupees decrease from rupees 15. So we'll write minus two in this method. And instead of comparing the margin account from the previous day, in this method, we will be comparing each account adjustment from the base value as well. So decreasing our margin account by two, the new level will stand at rupees eight. This is exactly the same amount which we calculated in this method. When F3 is 10, so it's a five rupees decrease from F0. So we'll write minus five as price change. And again, we will deduct this five from the base value of 10. So now the new margin account will stand at five. When F4 is eight, it's a seven rupees decrease from the initial day's price. So we will write minus seven and deducting seven from 10, the account comes to rupees three. Now there's an important point to note here. Since we receive a margin call on day four, so we added variation margin on the day four's account, which was three. However, in this method, any addition of variation margin will be added to the base value. Since we need to bring the account back to the initial margin, so we need a variation margin of seven. So instead of adding it with three, we will add it with the base value, bringing the new account to 17. And now for each coming day, we will compare the margin account from 17 instead of 10. Now in day five, when the price is again 10, so we can say it's a five rupees decrease from the initial day's price, 15. So we will write again as minus five as price change. And now this time our account is standing at 17. So we will deduct five from 17 
not 10. So if we deduct 5 from 17, the account comes back to 12, which is exactly the same when we calculated it with the previous method. So you can see all these calculations are exactly similar to the previous methods. So it's up to you which method you prefer since both will give you the same results. However, I personally prefer the earlier method since it's easy to do calculations on a daily basis and also to adjust margin calls, which is slightly easier than this second method. The point to note between the two methods regarding margin call is that in the first method, the variation margin needs to be added in the previous day's account, whereas in the second method, the variation margin needs to be added in the base values always before moving on to the next day's calculation. This example was for the buyer of the contract. We can also try the same example for the seller of the contract. The only difference will be in the signs of the daily price changes. For example, on day one, we have a price change of plus two and a gain for the buyer. But for the seller, it is a loss because he could have entered into a contract today to sell the asset at a price which is two rupees higher than the previous day's price of rupees 15. So the seller's account will be decreased by two rupees on the first day and will stand at rupees eight. Actually, it is this decrease which has been taken away from the seller's account and has been added to the buyer's account. So this is how exchange works. So that a seller's loss is the buyer's profit and vice versa. However, you should remember that the rest of the rules will remain the same even for the seller. That means the requirement for the initial margin of rupees 10 as well as the maintenance margin requirement of rupees 5. So depending upon the type of calculations we encountered for the seller, the adjustments in the account, including the margin calls and variation margins, should be made accordingly. It is not necessary that both the parties get a margin call at the same day. It all depends upon the daily price changes. That's it for this session. If you think this video helped you, please like it and subscribe to my channel Simply Finance. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.